I've been thinking how many of you people have ever thought of or dealt with what kind of uh, mini boss you are up against during your defense missions. Now I know some of you already knew about it, but for anyone else, I actually took interest to have a go over and cover every one of their modifiers, what they exactly do, and what are the best counters for them in combat. So first of all, there are three types of mini bosses. There's an epic husk, epic husky, and an epic smasher. One could spawn after a certain amount of time during the defense. They usually appear at the three minute mark, from all I remember, so just in case you want to be prepared for that mini boss to spawn with whatever combination of modifiers you're gonna be up against. Mini bosses are the ones that have a boss icon right next to their power level and health bar, so if you want to see its modifiers before shooting it, you could try aiming your crosshair at it from afar after doing so. The modifiers and its health bar should appear on the top left. We'll start off with the elementals. There are four elements that a mini boss can possibly be, which are fire, nature, water, and physical. The first three are the ones uh, you might want to keep an eye on, and it should be easy if you know about which one is weak against. Nature is weak against fire, fire being weak against water, and water being weak against nature. So having the right element on your weapon against an elemental that is weak to would utilize best and efficiently for countering. You may think you could uh, sleep it off by just using energy weapons, and that's alright. You'll deal about 75% elemental damage towards it, but just to let you know about using the element it's weak against, you can literally deal 100% more damage, which would effectively make a huge difference from just using energy based weapons. And if neither any of the three elements that were pointed out on the modifiers, that means it's a physical mini boss, so having a physical weapon is also necessary, as you deal more damage than with elemental damage neutrally. Acid and slowing pools. Whenever this type of mini boss walks around, it leaves a trail of pools a player without a brain can stand on it, whereas the acid pools damages the player over time the longer they stand on it. And they hurt. Trust me. And slowing pools debuffs them with a slow movement speed. Best way to avoid taking damage or being slowed by the mini bosses pools is to keep your distance and not be too close. Unless you're running a melee loadout and spending campfires for a single mission and what so. Berserker and Frenzied. I could possibly be wrong here, but both of them are nearly the same from my experience. The difference between the two is when the Berserker's health goes down to 50%, it has its movement speed and attack speed increased, whereas the Frenzied miniboss has both of its movement and attack speed in effect all the time. When I was researching, I heard Berserker minibosses were said to also have an increased damage once they reach half of their health. In all honesty, that might not affect much even when it comes down to dealing with the mini boss. that's almost twice its normal speed. Of course, uh, you will at one point run into that one annoying mini boss with both of these modifiers combined. Corrosive and Wall Weakening Corrosive mini bosses aren't that very serious unless uh, you barely build much around the objective. Whenever a corrosive mini boss hit one of your structures, that one structure will take some damage over a short period of time. Think of it like the mini boss is applying affliction as it corrodes your wall's health slowly. And as for the wall weakening, those mini bosses will deal more damage every time they hit the structure, and it's unlike corrosive. So as long as you keep your build healthy, they will not be much of a problem. A good constructor base will no doubt support the walls greatly. Healer and Vampiric. Mini bosses with a healer modifier well obviously heals itself and not only that, it also pulses a healing circle by a tile radius to heal other falling husks around. It's not really one of the worst uh, mini bosses out there, but they can be a bit annoying to deal with on higher levels because of how much damage they can take. So if you're able to hit the healer mini boss harder than it can heal itself enough, then it won't be much of a problem. As for the vampiric modifier, this one is much more dangerous than the healer mini boss. Every time they deal, damage towards players and or structures restores their health. I could be wrong here, but the reason why I say they are dangerous is uh, because for any other modifier that deals damage like acid pulse or damage pulse effect also applies towards the vampiric modifier when damaging. And for sure you don't want to deal with a mini boss that heals itself constantly. Knockback and Vortex. Honestly, both uh, Knockback and Vortex are more of an annoying modifier than being dangerous. Knockback does exactly what it says. 
It has that impact to knock you back uh, by a tile, while Vortex does the opposite. It pulls you if you are in close proximity of the mini boss. Kind of a toxic combo if you ask me. I would say you should be more careful with knockback mini bosses if you are defending the objective that is close to the edge of the map, so might as well keep your distance to avoid getting thrown off. Building blocker. A mini boss with this uh, modifier could be one of the worst you can ever encounter. It leaves a rocky trail on a tile wherever it goes, and it prevents players from placing structures on certain tiles the mini boss steps on for a period amount of time. So if uh, the mini boss is close to the core walls, you might need to either kill it as soon as possible before it breaks any of your structures, or kite it by making it target you. Another fact about this modifier on the mini boss, the building blocker also negates your traps completely from activating. Just like when a normal smasher stands on one of your floor launchers and it stops the trap from launching other husks that stand on it. So make sure you trap properly or have a constructor base for structure health and armor if you don't want to deal with being unable to place any walls. Damage pulls. Mini bosses with the damage pulse modifier, to me personally, is the worst one you can have on a mini boss. It emits a damaging circle around for a half tile every period of time the mini boss takes damage from players or traps that shoots at it. It can deal damage towards the players that are close to it and also structures around it. Even a constructor base can take damage from the pulse as well, considering the fact that it counts as a structure and not a trap. Damage Pulse is a very dangerous modifier to ever deal with, and it can be one of the reasons that you could fail a mission, so make sure you have enough firepower to kill it as fast as possible before it can possibly break majority of your base's walls, explode the objective, and fail the mission entirely. Ricochet Whenever you shoot a ricochet mini boss, it can reflect the damage output you've dealt towards you. So using a ranged weapon against it can be very risky, even if you spend healing pads or campfires shooting it. And to be fair, that's okay as long as you're alive trying to kill it. If you don't wanna spend heals, you can perform better by either dealing melee or ability damage on the mini boss, since both of them can ignore the effect completely and you won't take damage from the modifier. Shielded. This modifier is more of like a passive buff, and it isn't that much of a great resistance. Shielded modifier gives two levitating shields that spins around the mini boss. I do not know the exact percentage, but it reduces your ranged damage when you shoot towards one of its shields through. A very easy counter for them is either you shoot on an open area between the shields or get close to the mini boss and deal damage with a melee or a short ranged weapon as long as you're behind those shields. I could be wrong, but damaging the shielded mini boss with abilities can ignore the modifier completely like the ricochet modifier. Shield breaker. This uh, modifier is not actually one of the worst modifiers out there, and it's as well not very dangerous. It does exactly what it says. A mini boss with this uh, modifier breaks your whole shield with a single hit. This one is something that I wouldn't worry much about since I lose all of my shields literally most of the time during the defense. The only time you can worry about a shield breaker mini boss is when you use that one shield reliant sci-fi loadout, whereas you deal more damage trying to keep your shields up. And at the end of that, players that run blast from the past loadout can roll on the floor laughing at this shield breaker modifier and kill the mini boss without worrying about it. Smoke screen. This is one of the mini boss modifiers that some people don't even understand. So covering this should be very sweet. Smokescreen mini bosses have a swirling mist around it, granting it tremendous resistance that greatly reduces ranged weapon damage. I am not sure about the percentage, but I presume it could be between 80% to 90% resistance, making your ranged weapons nearly futile. Your best option to deal with smokescreen mini bosses is using a physical melee weapon. Yes, I said a physical melee weapon because many bosses with smoke screen tend to only be physical instead of elemental. Using abilities to damage the mini boss can ignore the smoke screen modifier completely. Tank. Definitely not the worst in my opinion, but it's the heaviest modifier for a mini boss. As many of you think that a tank mini boss has an increased amount of health, that is incorrect. Tank mini bosses have the same amount of health based on their power level. They are granted 75% damage resistance. It doesn't specify which damage category it falls to, 
So neither your ranged weapons, melee weapons, abilities, gadgets, and traps will be able to negate the buff. Because of its huge resistance towards any damage you deal at the mini boss, it will basically take you a pretty long time to take it down unless you have a full team focusing on it. You may as well spend a lot of ammo trying to shoot one tanky mini boss or use abilities and hard hitting traps. Trap vulnerable. This uh, modifier is also another thing that some people don't understand well, like the smokescreen one. A trap vulnerable mini boss has about 99% resistance towards any of your weapons and abilities, but also has 99% increased vulnerability towards damage traps. Killing this type of a mini boss is super easy. So if you have uh, trap tunnels or self-proclaimed base ready, it should never be much of a problem dealing with it. Volcanic. It's not even close to being a dangerous modifier, but can be as annoying like the knockback and vortex modifiers. Volcanic modifiers spawn lava pools below the player by a couple tiles close to the mini boss, and in my personal experience, it does very little damage towards players and not as much damage as uh, acid pools or damage pools. I'd say this modifier's purpose is to block visuals over players which can be a bit annoying, but doesn't even affect the way you approach such mini boss though. This is something you don't have to worry about, even when you are running a very squishy loadout. Now that we know what every single mini boss modifier do and are clarified, I would like to point out some combinations any mini boss could possibly get, just in case any of you guys are having trouble with. I have been hunting them for footages and as well to find the worst mini bosses yet to deal with, and here's uh, what I found so far. Berserker and Frenzied. These two modifiers together are very nasty. The mini boss already has that uh, movement and attack speed at full health, so once you deplete its health down to 50%, it'll burst and have two times the speed buff, which can be very dangerous, and have an insane amount of damage per second because of how fast it can hit. The odds it can possibly be against you if the mini boss has the slowing pools modifier <laughs> along with these two. Tank plus damage balls. From my experience, this combination is not common. You don't find this every day, but these two modifiers together can be one of the most dangerous mini bosses you can ever encounter. Luckily, it's not impossible to kill, even if it were to be an epic smasher, but having a mini boss with a huge damage resistance and also able to damage both players and structures at the same time is a total nightmare, especially facing it on a higher power level missions, so be prepared. Trap vulnerable plus building blocker. I wanted to point out this combination, even if it's that easy to kill for a trap vulnerable, because uh, the building blocker modifier negates traps from activating when it's close to it. You might not be able to kill them it was on time before it teleports away or despawns, so the best thing you can do instead of building around it and use broadsides, you can try placing hard hitting wall darts a tile away prior to the mini boss spawning in order to effectively kill without having trouble dealing with the building blocker modifier. Vampiric and acid pools. This combination can also be one of the worst as well. A mini boss with a damaging trail of pools can also restore its health from anyone that stands on it, which makes it constantly heal itself. If this particular mini boss has another modifier like damage pulse, volcanic or even fire element due to its applying burn on players, it can be the most annoying mini boss to kill because of its life leech modifier. So that should sum up every mini boss modifiers that I have found and explained along with the combinations. I can help point out the best counters for whatever mini boss you may find during your missions. These counters are just personally my way to deal with the mini bosses and you're free to share how you counter them and or perhaps learn from how me and many others that can kill them easily. Elemental mini bosses. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys sleep on whatever element the mini boss uh, could be and just use energy based or locked weapons like mainly using an energy pot shot or storm king's wrath just because you think it deals decent amount of damage and be done for the day what i really like using against any elemental mini boss are shotguns shotguns are actually the strongest damage per second weapons in the game so i have the resources for perking and leveling multiple schematics of a singular gun it really helped me out craft the same decent shotgun with a different element. That is because mini bosses can ignore either all of the three elements in a storm mission, 
like a nature mini boss can possibly spawn in a water storm mission for example so i use the ground pounder as my top go-to shotgun because of its versatility with its damage and magazine size making it one of the best damage per second shotguns out there you can get and you can use other shotguns like the stampede the room sweeper or the husk buster as an alternative smoke screen plus trap vulnerable I'm pointing this out because I specified these two modifiers earlier as some people out there in public matches. Yes, I am talking about those kinds of teammates you ran onto in those matches you haven't had fun running with. Starting with trap vulnerable mini bosses, it should be pretty easy to kill with just having to kite them into the trap tunnels or place broadsides around the mini boss when possible as long as it's not a booming blocker. Sadly, it might not be that obvious to other people in which they still continue to shoot it despite its super high resistance to weapon and ability damage. And with smokescreen, it's far less resistance but still makes the range of the weapons nearly pointless to shoot the mini boss that takes increased damage against melee weapons and abilities. Yeah, you also find those teammates that still shoots a smokescreen mini boss with expensive weapons like the pot shot or wrath. Yep, that guy shooting a smokescreen mini boss. Well, not just the two meta weapons but any other ranged weapons you can think of with how you can counter a smokescreen mini boss effectively using the storm king's ravager against it will be your best option because of its ranged heavy attack being considered melee damage after a couple hits charging it a crit build and physical element is something you might want to have on hand before its best damage output possible against the smokescreen if you don't have the mythic sword you can use the spectral blade with the same perks and it can be a physical element it still works as long as you have a melee that can deal damage on the mini boss worst mini bosses so there are mini bosses with the worst combinations that you don't want to deal with and if you're one of those people that do not care about the rewards it drops you can run a constructor that has the bull rush ability and use that to push away the mini boss out of the base or luckily out of the map to avoid having it break your structures as long as it's not an epic smasher in my personal opinion i do not recommend bull rushing the mini boss out if you have teammates that can actually kill it that's just putting them out of their way instead of getting the rewards they wanted a weapon like the sir lancelot can also push mini bosses by a tile depending on the impact perk it has even if it doesn't have one impact perk it can still push mini bosses aside it can as well stop smashers from charging if you can time in position right before the smasher charges in that also applies to epic smashers as well as for what loadout to use against these mini bosses you can use almost any of your liking as long as you're damaging it with weapons like the shrapnel and buckshot loadout with semi or full auto shotguns or paleo luna with melee weapons or me personally i use the diecast jonesy minigun loadout diecast has that boomstick commander perk which increases the going command to damage and convert its element to energy making it a very powerful ability to use against many mini bosses especially the elemental ones it's also an ideal loadout whenever you're running ventures at a point where you couldn't do enough damage or haven't got a good weapon to use or you don't have a melee against certain mini bosses the cool thing is for any ability damage you deal it ignores shielded ricochet and smokescreen modifiers so a minigun would surely melt everything i'd also like to say command the spitfire loadout which is the five second minigun cooldown would also work if you feel like just uh, wanting to bring up the physical minigun as much as you can but in terms of damage diecast jonesy is my go-to lead hero Alright, so that should cover up all of the aspects. I really hope that this guide helped you out, understand the modifiers, how to defeat them, and what the, the counters and the strategies are. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. I'll see you later, take care of yourself, and uh, love yourself.